This video is to remind you on how to graph quadratic equations. Remember there are two different forms of quadratic equations that we've talked about, so we need to be familiar with both forms. Additionally, you're going to want a calculator to create a table of values. If you don't have a calculator, then maybe go explore Desmos. I did create a video um, at the start of this digital learning process for you to go view. Um, there will also be a graphing calculator on your test in case you don't have one. So the first form that we're going to practice graphing is in vertex form. So in vertex form, this is the easiest form to graph from because they've given us the vertex. Remember that H and K represent the vertex. Remember also we do the opposite of H. So we always take, we always think of the opposite sign. Okay. Once we know our vertex, we can create a table of values. So in this first question here, this first equation, we have this vertex here. Okay. That vertex is at 2, 2. And remember, we always think of the opposite when it comes to H. So I can create a little mini table here. I'm going to put 2, 2 in the middle of my table. That gives us a starting point on what kind of table we want to make. So I'm going to pick two points before it, two points after it. Okay, so then we have two different types of calculators that we've been practicing with. So the first thing we want to do if we have a graphing calculator is we want to go to the y equals button and we'll clear out what we have. If we have a TI-36 or scientific calculator, we want to find the table button and on this one we want to edit a function. I'm going to clear that out. So once we have it set up, we want to type in the exact problem that we see. So we're going to type in negative three parentheses. I have x minus 2 closed room squared plus 2. Same thing here. Negative 3 parentheses. Remember your x is below your squared. x minus 2 squared plus 2. Okay. On my graphing calculator, we want to go to the table button. So we'll go to second table. And I'm going to look for the table of values that I wrote in my chart here. So I have 0, negative 10, I have 1, negative 1, and the greatest thing about quadratics is remember we have a mirror point. Those points around that vertex are going to be the same. They're going to mirror each other on either side of that vertex. Okay. We can get the same table in our TI-36. I'm going to start at 0, count by 1, so I'm going to keep hitting enter. And I get those same values. Okay. So now that we have our table, we're able to graph it. So we're just going to plot our points on our graph. <coughs> Sorry, I just dropped my calculator. So I'm going to plot 2, 2. I'm going to plot 1, negative 1, 3, negative 1. And I'm going to plot, let's see, oh, 2, 2 is up here at a 2, negative 2. 2, 2, 1, negative 1, 3, negative 1, 0, negative 10. So I think that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, yep, 10. And then 4, negative 10. Remember when we graph quadratics, we bend it in a curve here, and it looks just like this. The cool thing about having a graphing calculator is you can hit graph, and you can see it. Our two graphs match each other, so that's an excellent 
test taking strategy, being able to see the graph graphically on your calculator, maybe matching it up to some graph paper that you have there at home. Right? So let's just quickly remind ourselves on why this quadratic function was is flipped over. So remember the negative? That's a reflection, it's flipped over. Okay. Why is this graph super skinny? Because of that stretch. And then another key feature is we have this vertex. Okay, this is awesome. We have this vertex here. So I'm going to use my graphing calculator again to create another table. So we go to y equals and clear up my function. This is in vertex form. It matches this form up top. So I'm going to identify my vertex. This time it is at 2, negative 2. So I'm going to create a little table of values. This is 2, negative 2. And we still pick two points before it and two points after it. So I'm going to type that function in. x minus 2 squared plus 2. I'm going to go to second table and fill in those values. So 6, 3, see it? 6, 3, 2, 3, 6. So 6. 3, 3, 6, and I'm going to plot those points. I'm going to erase what we have here, and I'm going to plot those next points. So we have, now we have 2, negative 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. Um, then we have, let's see. 0, 6, 6, 2, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6, yep. Um, so, yeah, this looks really stretched out though. Zero six one three. What did I? Oh, look what I did! I graphed it wrong, which is fine. I can make mistakes. You can too. This should be a negative. So that's actually going to change our table a little bit. Like that's too stretched out for this to be for this to work. So we have. I'm gonna change the table here. We have. 0, 2, then we have 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, there we go. Okay, so this is negative 1 and 2. So let's erase this and try this again, see if it looks. So 1, negative 1, here and here, good. 0, 2, there we go. Now, I know that first one looks funny, because on my graph here, I don't, on my equation, I don't have a shrink or a stretch. So I should remember, I should have a little bit of a slope of one right here. But that's how you graph it. You gotta create a table. So let's look at the standard form equation. Standard form, remember, is what we used to factor from or what we solve from, this ax squared plus bx plus c. We're still gonna make a table. But the important thing about graphing quadratics is we have to find the vertex. So remember, we have a vertex equation. Remember, your vertex is equal to the opposite of b over 2a. That little formula helps you find the vertex. But remember, it's really the x value of the vertex. So looking at this first equation here, we would say x equals the opposite of b. So 16 is positive, the opposite is negative, all over 2a. So this is negative 16 divided by 4, so this is negative 4. So I know that's where my middle of my table is going to start. So that helps me start my table. So I'm going to have 
negative 5 and negative 6, negative 3 and negative 2. So I can fill in the rest of these values using my calculator. So I'm going to use the 36 this time to clear out my function. 2x squared plus 16x plus 29. I'm going to keep hitting enter. And I started it at 0, but really I need negative 6. So I'm going to keep arrowing up. So this is 5, negative 1, negative 3. Remember, this is your vertex, so it's just going to mirror on the other side. And we're going to graph this. So we have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. We have 5, negative 1, which means we have 3, negative 1. We have 2, 5. So it's up here. Four, five. Okay. We connect this with a curve. It's called a parabola. Boom. Okay. Now, remember, looking at our graph here, we don't have a y-intercept graph. It's going to be way off of our graph. But I just want to remind you that when we're in standard form, this c value is our y-intercept. Or if we can't see our y-intercept, we can use the table we created and go to where x equals 0 and find our y-intercept. Okay, so it's possible to find this y-intercept. It not existing doesn't count. Okay, let's do one more standard form. Again, we're going to have to find the vertex, so we're going to have to use this vertex equation. So we're going to do x equals the opposite of b, the opposite of a positive 8 to negative 8, all over 2 times a negative 1, because that a value is negative. So this is negative 8 over negative 2, which gives us a positive 4. So again, I'm going to create a little table of values here, and I'm going to put 4 in the middle. My vertex is always in the middle. Two points that come before it two points that come after it. So let's graph this really quickly. So we're going to have two, oh, well we can't graph it. We need a table of values. So we'll go to our table, edit function. We have negative x squared plus 8x plus minus 13. And we want to start our table actually at a positive 2. And we'll keep entering. All right, so we're going to have, so filling out my table to graph, we have 211. Oh, because I messed up my thing. Okay. We have 2, negative 1, 3, 2, 4, 3. That's my vertex, so I know this is going to be 2 and negative 1. All right, so now we can take those points and plot them. So 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, negative 1. So that's 6, negative 1. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2. So it looks like this. Remember, we had a negative out front of our equation. So this is upside down. I want to do one more. No, I can't do one more example. Um, please remember to tune in and to ask questions on the remind if you need it. This is graphing quadratic equations is the first section of your review. Happy studying.